Hi, hello, I'm back after a few months. Yes, I know it's been a while, but I'm back for now and we'll see how this goes. But as you can see from the title, I am once again going to show you how you can install Blockstrap and reviewing Blockstrap because a lot of a lot has changed from the past four months. You know, Blockstrap has received a lot of updates. Roblox has received a lot of updates and there's a lot of questions that need to be answered that I get asked a lot. And yeah, this is an updated version of my video on how to install Blockstrap four months ago. And um, yeah, also try to ignore any snoring in the background because my dad's sleeping. So um, yeah, uh, I'll try to cut out as much as possible, but you might hear a bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's get, let's get into it. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to head over to the Blockstrap GitHub repository. This is where you would download Blockstrap and this is the official GitHub repository for Blockstrap where you would have all the information you need to read about the wiki, the issues page, all of that. And it will be the first link in the description of the video. Uh, once you're here, you want to scroll all the way down and read through all this if you want to, but I'm just going to summarize everything. The first thing that you want to do is you want to head over to .NET 6 desktop runtime, which is the second link in the description. And once you do that, you would download the .NET 6.0 desktop runtime. This is essential. You need this for Blockstrap. If you don't have this, Blockstrap will not run properly or not run at all, but you'll be prompted to download this anyways if you don't have it installed already. Okay. Now that you've downloaded desktop runtime, you're going to head back to the GitHub repository and you want to go all the way up until you see releases on the releases tab above contributors. It should be in the right corner of your screen. Once you click that, you would go to the releases tab on Blockstrap. This is Blockstrap version 2.4.0 and it would say all new features, changes, fixes, removals, all of that. We'll worry about that later. When you want to hover all the way down to see assets and you want to click on Blockstrap version 2.4.0.exe. Now, because I already have Blockstrap installed, I'm not going to install it again, but I'm going to guide you through it and the simple steps after you press the exe to install it. Once you've done that, you're going to have a prompt to install it. You want to open the file. Once you open the file, Microsoft Smart Screen might say that it's suspicious or it's un not trustworthy. That's perfectly fine. It is completely trustworthy. It just doesn't have enough downloads or it doesn't have a certificate, which is qu it can be quite expensive. So what you want to do is you want to press more info and you want to press run anyway. And that's going to immediately launch you and put you to the Blockstrap menu. So once you've successfully installed Blockstrap and opened the file and do all the Windows Smart Screen thing, this is the first thing that you'll see, which is the Blockstrap menu. I will be showing you each and every feature on this menu as of version 2.4.0 that I can. And some of these things won't be enabled for you because this is the first time and I've already set it to what my preferences are. Of course, you can change this around later on and all those things. I'll tell you how you can do that later as well. So the first thing that you want to do is head over to the integrations tab. You should already be here, but if you're not, then you want to head over to the integrations tab. And under integrations, you'll see Roblox activity tracking. You you would enable this because this, as it says, allows Blockstrap to detect what Roblox game you're playing. Certain features of Blockstrap may require this. And then see server location when joining a game. Basically, when you join a Roblox game and you're not in full screen, you're on a Windows mode. You're on a windowed mode. It would show the notification, a Windows notification by Blockstrap that basically says the server region that you're in and if it's protected by DDoSs or denial of service attacks. Next up is Discord Rich Presence. This is if you use Discord and of course show game activity. It will show what Roblox game you're playing as shown on screen and it will just display it as a Rich Presence. Next is allow activity joining for Discord Rich Presence. This I would recommend turning it off unless you want random people that see your profile to click and join you in your game. This uses the deep linking Roblox feature because it's launch data. Next in the miscellaneous section you have allow multi instance launching. Basically if you have a Roblox client already open and you accidentally click on play on the website or on another account it'll open Roblox on another tab simultaneously so you have two Roblox tabs open at the same time. Next up is custom integrations. All you have to do here is you want to click on new and you want to add whatever application you want to open when Blockstrap opens as well. In case you want to open, I don't know, Spotify or other things as you open Roblox. This is optional. Next up is the mods tab. So once you click on the mods tab, you see a lot of things here. Uh, it might look scary, but trust me, it's very easy. The first thing is the mods folder. 
you can read the wiki in the help over here to understand more. But briefly what it does is it replaces the Roblox client stuff with whatever you enable here. Don't worry, all the stuff that you have is saved. It's not lost, it's just overriding it as you launch Roblox with Blockstrap. Now the presets. The first one is use old death sound, which you would not hear the uh that sound, you would hear the oof that sound whenever you reset your character or another person resets their character, etc. Next up is the mouse cursor. This is a new feature. Well, there's an update. This is an updated version because before there used to be the default, which is the one that we have now, and 2013 Angular. But now in the Roblox Star version 2.4.0, they've added the 2006 cartoony old Roblox cursor. And in my opinion, don't use this. It's only good when you are hovering over things, but just the mouse itself doesn't really look good in my opinion. Next up is used old avatar editor background. This uses the avatar editor background that's prior to 2020. Basically meaning you remember that old wardrobe for your avatar editor whenever you edit your avatar. That will bring that back and replace the dark void in the desktop app. Next is emulate old character sounds. This is also a new one as far as with the previous one as well. This, as it says, tries to bring back the old character sounds for of Roblox prior to 2014, so the classic 2006 sounds. Disable desktop app should be self-explanatory. It's, it's like pressing don't ask me again and close Roblox and that type of stuff. Next up is preferred emoji type. This is what emojis Roblox uses. The default is Twemoji, but I just select Windows 11 because why not? That's also a new thing. In miscellaneous, you have apply custom font. That's a new thing, which basically means it will make every Roblox game have a font that you chose. I don't know why you would want this, but sure. Disable full screen optimizations. I don't personally play Roblox on full screen, but I disable this anyways. You can read more about it here. I don't want to read it because it's kind of too long, but yeah. Next up is the fast flag section. The fast flag section or tab will show you all the things that you can change on Roblox with its API and all those other things when you open up the client. So the first thing is the fast flag editor. When you click on this, you can add a new flag with the flag name and the flag value. Before it used to be the client settings.json, but in the Blockstar version 2.4.0, they updated this. You can show the preset flags, which basically shows you the name and the value of each of these, which are basically the presets that are shown here. The first one is frame rate limit. This is basically your FPS. So the default, if you set this to zero, is basically setting it to 60. And by default, when you have Blockstrap enabled, it would set it to 9999, which is unlimited, essentially. Next up is preferred lightning te lighting technology. Sorry, This means that any Roblox game or experience that you join, it will be forced with these light lightings presets. So like for voxel lighting, shadow map lighting, or future lighting, no matter what Roblox experience lighting it chooses. So let's say Murder Mystery chooses the shadow map and Greenville chooses future. If you have future enabled, all Roblox games would have future lighting enabled, no matter what the actual game lighting is, if that makes sense. Next is the preferred escape menu option or version. This is new, I believe. And this is basically changing the menu of Roblox, the escape menu. So the default is what we have now, which is basically the version 1 2015. And version 2 2020 is the sidebar menu. And version 4 2023 is the one that we have. But it's not the one with the full black background. This one is actually transparent. So it's an updated version of the newly released one that Roblox released. This is also a new one, which is enable ability to hide GUIs. This is good for people that want to have screenshots for vibe games or have a better look at their game with free cam and all these other things because you can enable and disable all the Roblox GUIs from your client, even the core GUIs, which there would be keyboard shortcuts which would be shown on screen. And I would also link the Blockstrap group in the description because you have to join that group or else this feature would not work. Next up is the use old material textures. This is going to use all the old material texture packs 
before 2022, the newly released one. Next is rendering mode. This will just choose what rendering mode Roblox should use. If you set it to autom automatic, then it might change it by itself, but just leave it as automatic and whatever it changes to, just leave it there if you want. Last thing in the fast flags tab is the use alternate graphics quality selector. This is basically changing it from one to 10 on the graphics scale on the settings menu in Roblox to one to 21, which is a lot of the tabs that you see earlier this year of people using. Next up is the appearance tab. You would have the theme, which is the theme of block strap. You can choose system, default, light, or dark. I don't know what you would choose light. And the style, you can choose fluent, which is the regular version, and all these other versions like legacy, vista, which is new, and fake Bifron, which I really like. This is basically the style of what block strap will launch as. I will show a screenshot on screen right now on what the regular block strap should look like when it's launching and I will show the fake Bifron one that's launching as well which is what I ch chose you know the fake Bifron one that everybody believed was real but turned out to be fake yeah that's an actual launcher that you can use now with block strap to kind of trick people or just because it looks cool I enable it just because it looks cool it's rounded corners and yeah Next is you can choose the custom icon for block strap. You can choose it as custom or just the regular block strap one. And then the bootstrap or customization, you would click that and it would let you select an icon file or a .ico file. That is going to be the icon of this and the name of block strap. And just so you can see what I mean with the fake buy from 2023, if you click preview, it'll preview the style that you have. So this is the buy from one that will show when you launch Roblox. And the default, which is the fluent, which it will show this. And as you can see, the name is that that I set in the customization. So the name would be instead of blockchain, it would be soccer bab, which is what I set. And the custom icon will be the ICO file. Next one is the behavior tab, which will have self explanatory stuff as well. Create desktop icon. Do you want to put blockstrap on your desktop? Automatic, uh, bl automatically update blockstrap, which automatically updates block strap and the channel which is the roblox channel this means that you can choose different channels that you want of roblox so you can choose the canary version the integration version avatar team or the live which is the one that's live right now these are all test versions besides the live so using with caution there might be bugs an automatic channel change this basically means that sometimes block strap will change the channel this to different versions while it's updating or if you change it, it will change it back so you can always have it to change automatically or prompt you to ask you if you want to change it or just never change I'll leave it as never change and for your first time installing you want to head over to the installation tab and you want to select the location of the file of the folder that you want Blockstrap to be in or just leave it as default and it will show you how to uninstall Blockstrap and the log folder as well if for debugging I don't want to show that because there's some personal information there and in the about section is just contributions and all these other things that you can read and all of that and that is it once you're finished configuring everything you want to click on save and it'll save your settings and everything for you and if it's your first time it'll tell you how to go back to the menu which is basically just going to the search bar and typing block strap menu or go to the start menu and scroll down until you see block strap menu once that's done, of course, just press save, and that's it. Now for the questions. The first one is, is this available on other platforms? No, this is only available for Windows only at the current moment. I don't know if it will be available for Linux or Mac OS later on, but for now, it's only on Windows. Second one is, will this work on the Microsoft Store version? My answer is no, but you can experiment with it. I assume it doesn't work on Microsoft Store or else it would be advertised here as well. So the answer is basically no. The third one is will I get banned if I use Blockstrap? You will not get banned if you use Blockstrap because Blockstrap configures client settings, which is client-sided, what you see, and it also abides by Roblox's terms. 
and does not break Roblox's rules because it's just customizing whatever Roblox already has themselves. So it's changing things on the client that Roblox already has, basically, if that makes sense. And the last question that you have would be, what about shaders? Shaders are taken away because it's not supported anymore, unfortunately. And yeah, that's all I have, really. And that's it. I hope this video helps you a lot. And I hope this video informs you and teaches you how you can use Blockstrap. And hope you enjoy Blockstrap because I've never not used Blockstrap ever since I've known about it. I've downloaded it on the school PCs and just... I kept supporting Blockstrap because it's the best thing ever, in my opinion. F listens to the community, you know, all these other things as well. And yeah. Also, I forgot to mention that you can go to the wiki page and read all the guides and features as well, if you so wish to. And you can go to the GitHub issues page, which all of these will be linked in the description below. The GitHub issues page is where you would ask questions, report bugs, and request new features to the official people behind Blockstrap so I don't have to go in the comment section and try to answer questions that I cannot answer because I did not make it. So if you have any questions, features, bugs, whatever, go to the GitHub issues page and the creator of Blockstrap or the Blockstrap team will reply to you and give you an answer on whatever question you have. That's it from me. I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.